Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images and I'm going to try and address a question I get asked quite often is that why are so many modern printers awful at printing black and white? Um, there are lots of reasons. I'm going to cover some reasons why printing black and white is difficult for printers, inkjet printers. I'm going to look at some ways around it, um, some potential changes in newer printers, and basically ways of printing black and white images. Now, black and white prints are perfectly doable. Um, I do them myself all the time. But there are certain bits and pieces that you need to take note of uh, because there is a basic problem with inkjet printers and printing black and white. Why is that? And that is because we are, our visual system is much more sensitive to small tints and tones in prints than it is in color prints. In a color print, we adapt, your eyesight adapts quite well, um, no real problem. But when you have black and white prints, particularly if you want a bang on neutral black and white print, um, it's actually quite difficult for the inkjet printer to produce that degree of precision because there are all sorts of things that affect it. Now, there's a print up here. This is a smaller version of one I showed the other day as a large print. And depending on the lighting, and I've adjusted lighting in here to try and make things look okay on uh, the video. But depending on the lighting, this one can occasionally have an ever so slight greenish tinge. Or, I've heard people say this one looks bang on black and white. People's visual systems differ as well. And such are the sensitivities to these sort of faint tints and things that actually it's, it can be quite tricky. It's something that you may find that if you print, um, and I'll come back to different types of printers and different ways of printing black and white, but you may find that your favorite paper for printing color prints doesn't work so well for printing black and white. Now I've got all sorts of ways around that, but you need to appreciate that it's difficult for a print. Why is it difficult? Well, you so why not just produce a printer that produces black for, that's just aimed at black and white photo printing? Lovely idea, um, but the economics of it don't work. Uh, basically the printers that printer makers have to be suitable for everything. Now they have a range of printers from small ones to big ones, but they have a defined market and black and white, no matter how much you like it, is not that big a market. I'm a commercial uh, architectural photographer. Very rarely do I ever get asked for black and white images. Now I do produce black and white images all the time. And sometimes I may even sell a print to a client who's seen one of it and think, oh, that's nice. But that wasn't until they'd seen the black and white print. So there's a bit of work to do there. Um, but back to why printers have difficulties. Well, I've got an example here. And um, the images are from a review I did of looking at the Epson P20,000. Now the P20,000 is a gigantic great printer, uh, 64 inch width. It is absolutely huge. And uh, there's a print here, this, this example print, a wooden print, was actually printed just on the width of the paper. That's on 64 inch paper. Just a print and then cut off, hence the curl of it on there. Um, it looks excellent. It's a printer, I thoroughly recommend. The only slight problem, why haven't I got one here? It's huge, I could not get it into the house, yet alone have anywhere to, to use it. Uh, it's quite expensive. Um, yeah, it, it's just not practical. Uh, but it's my standard go-to printer. If somebody just contacts me and says, Keith, what's the best printer for me to buy? I'll go, yeah, get yourself a P20,000. Then they can go away, look it up and find out how big and expensive it is and realize why I cannot answer all simple questions like what's the best printer. Um, it depends. But anyway, this one is interesting in that it has a basic CMYK ink set. So cyan, magenta, yellow takes care of the color and a black. OK, but this particular one has a dark grey, grey and light grey inks. Now, sometimes people say, ah, it's got more grey inks, must be better for black and white. Actually, those grey inks are not there for black and white. They are there to give smooth tonality for colour work. In large flat areas or large gradients and things like that, you tend to get better smoothness. Now, there are no really strong colours, so there's no red 
ink, no green ink, no blue ink in this. So the gamut of this is not necessarily that big, but of course the gamut doesn't matter for black and white because black and white effectively has no gamut if it's done properly. It is just a grayscale between black and white. And it's that scale between black and white that causes the problems. Now I've got a image here. This is taken from a shot with a, you know, a macro lens looking at that actual print. It's on a art paper. And you can see it looks pretty good. Um, there are no obvious bits of colour in it, but it's not until you zoom in that you see there are actually, in your black and white print, there are lots of little drops of colour ink. Why are there colour inks? Several reasons. One is even if you've got grey inks, they only give you steps and you would need uh, a mix of them. And if you're just using a few inks, you tend to get a slightly grainier look. Uh, there's also the problem that the blacks are not necessarily truly neutral, or the greys, I should say as well, are not necessarily truly neutral. This is why you have difficulties in printing black and white sometimes on dye-based printers, because the blacks often reflect quite strongly in the infrared and, and dark red, which means that depending on the lighting you view in, you get color casts. Now, color casts, I'll come back to fixing some of these sort of things and the ways I get around this. Color casts are always a problem. With dye inks, if you're using a dye ink printer, accept that your picture may look great with black and white, in certain lighting, but if you take it and look at it in daylight or you take it in a different form of lighting, it may develop a colour cast. Not a lot you can do about that. Effectively, you have to know where you're going to be viewing your print. Pigment inks are better for that. They don't show that met metamerism as much as an aluminum metamerism. And they are better for that. So in general, it's why people say use pigment inks for black and white. Doesn't mean that with printers like the Pro 200 and the like, excellent dye based printer, I can't produce black and white. And I've shown in the review of it, of that, how to get good black and white. And I would say all my reviews of printers tend to have a section or even an, a separate article dealing with how to get the best black and white out of the printer. So if you've got an ink tank printer, something like the ET8550, I've got a whole lot of stuff on getting the best results for black and white. And it varies depending on papers. It varies from printer to printer. So you have to be prepared to do a bit of testing to get the best black and white out of these things. But if I'm just mixing these inks up here, surely this is what profiling is for. I mentioned profiling. Yeah, it's used for color all the time. I use color. Um, I use it. I have this test image that I use for checking after I've done profiling that it prints OK. This has a black and white panel on it, by the way, and this one does show, um, I can see slight color differences between, now whether this will be video, uh, visible on the video, I've got a glossy print here and one on an art paper, and I can see one has a slightly bluer tinge to it, one has a slightly greener tinge to it. Now, that's just in the lighting, that's what I can see. Not necessarily what you can see on the video, because that's what the camera's picking up. So just you know, when you see stuff on video for that showing black and white, just remember it's very difficult to show good black and white with subtle tones and things on, on video. But anyway, that's my standard test image for profiling. Why can't we just fix black and white with profiling? Well, I won't go so far as to say that the software sucks for black and white printing use. Um, but if you look at all the major uh, profiling solutions, Black and white, if covered at all, is very much an afterthought. So the latest, you know, CC Studio, uh, which was i1 Studio, which is the Color Monkey, for example, has the option to make black and white profiles. Well, it's nice that it's there, and it's good that they show willing. But I often feel that black and white stuff has been produced by people who don't actually do black and white photography or make much black and white printing. So there's no features in it for addressing linearity. Linearity, it's making sure that the shadows aren't crunched up, that the tonality across the range from paper white to full black is even without any bumps or bands in it. Now that doesn't always show up in an actual image, but I've got a test image here. This is the other one. This is downloadable from the Northlight Images website. 
This one here is designed to show problems with black and white printing. It has, there are several different versions of it for checking linearity. If you're curious about using this to make adjustments to your black and white prints, print this one out. Now you can scan it or even you can take a photograph. I've got quite a few articles associated with the downloads for, for this that uh, show different aspects of how to use it. But you can take a photograph of it Take it, use a raw file. Crank up the color a bit, and you will see all the different slight color variations in it. Now, that can be quite worrying the first time you see it. You think, oh, there are all those colors. Fortunately, most people will never see it. But if you just crank up the color, and you know, take the picture in the lighting that you're going to be viewing the print in. Now there are differences obviously between camera and your and your vision, your own vision. So there's going to be differences there. But crank up the colour. If you see a net greenish tinge to your print, then if your printing setup allows it, and certainly if you use some of the bespoke you know, software that's available for, you know, the ABW mode for Epson, the uh, black and white print mode for Canon, they often have subtle adjustments built into them for changing the tint. Have a look at that. You can use that in conjunction with, say, a photograph or a scan of a print just for offsetting those slight adjustments. But always be, you know, remember that you can only do that so far. Uh, you're limited by white is given by the paper and the color of the paper does influence things. If you've got a glossy paper, it might have optical brightness in it and that may well change things like that. So it's always a matter of experimentation. Um, in some ways, the problem with black and white is that you have to put a bit more work into getting good results. Now, I hope that the developers of this profiling software on that will take on board the various issues that have been raised about how good they are, and we will see that get better, but I'm not holding my breath for it. Um, it would be nice if a profiling package, even an advanced package like uh, i1 Profiler uh, that I use for making my big profiles, it would be nice if that actually supported black and white optimized profiling. Um, we're waiting for x right to get back to us on that one. Um, I believe I first suggested it in about 2009. Yeah, there's a chance. But anyway, it will work. Profiling does help. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these things are no good at all. I'm just saying they could be so much better. Um, so test images, that's one way around it. Adjusting your image before it gets printing, printed. Using the black and white print mode of your print driver. Now, I've had people say, well, what about printing using just the black ink? Well, that was a thing quite a few years ago called uh, black only printing. Uh, you just used the black ink. Uh, often the prints came out a little warm, but uh, you got a consistency of them. The only problem is using just the black ink, they were very grainy because if you've got just the black ink, how do you print these very light, pale, almost white greys here? You just need very sparse drops of ink. And of course, they're enough that if you look at your printer, you could see the ink drops on it. That was a problem of black only printing, but it's something to experiment with if you want to, if, if your driver offers it. So what about new printers? Well, I'm told that black and white is being considered more in new printers. Just how much we will get of that and how much that will be refined, I await to see. Now I'm expecting obviously to see some new printers this year and um, well, we'll put that to the test and see whether there are actually any changes. But black and white can be done very well. It's very easy. One last little bit. There's a bit here, you can see a picture of my, my feet and things. You can of course use a custom ink set. Uh, these have been around for 20 odd, well, over 20 years, uh, where you put custom inks into your inkjet printer. Of course, that means you can't use it normally. You're going to mess your warranty up. You put custom inks in. You use something like Quad Tone Rip. Now, if you're really, really interested in black and white and really want to experiment with it, I'll put some links to Quad Tone Rip 
and some of the f ink sets for it. But just beware, this was some of the test prints I ended up producing just to try and get uh, good black and white prints on a few particular papers. Uh, it's a lot of work, so it can be done, but look out for those black and white print modes and um, please enjoy black and white photography and black and white printing. Oh, just one other little bit of this. If you're going to print using the black and white print mode, best convert your images from color to black and white first. I'll put a link to some conversion info and stuff on that, but it gives you far more flexibility in the tonality and the translation of different colors to different grays. Makes a big difference in how your black and white photography works. But there you have it. If anyone's got any questions, do let me know. Um, so someone's question from a video the other day is when they said, why is black and white difficult? Uh, surely it should be much easier. Uh, yes, you would think so, but it isn't. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye.